Welcome you to the service this morning, and I trust you have come expecting something good from the Lord. Amen? Do you see this book right here? It's what we're going to be preaching from, so something good is going to come out of this book. So it's a joy to have you in the service, and um, we're going to pray and ask God's blessing on the offering. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we are thankful for the privilege of being in your house to be about your business. Lord, you know what we need today. And so I pray, Lord, that you will give us this day our daily bread. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us that portion of strength and grace and help and hope that we need for this day. Now bless this offering. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of giving for the privilege of investing in eternity. Now for all that you do, we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tom, would you mind restarting that for us? We're a little, little slow on the draw this morning. <laughs> Light. I will yet praise Him, 
Madison. I remember the first time we ever sang that song so many years ago. It's just been such a blessing, but aren't you glad there's still hope for all of us today? No matter what circumstance we come through, or no matter how many times we fail, there's still a hope for our future. Um, this week as I've been studying, I learned there's an ancient Hebrew word for unconditional love, a word that combines love and loyalty, and that word is hesed. And it's um, not just a feeling, but a choice, an action. And hesed is a merciful, intentional love that intervenes on behalf of the loved ones and comes to their rescue. Aren't you thankful that Jesus intervened and came, stepped in our path, stepped in our way of whatever choices we were making and stopped us? And it's amazing that that love has been shed for us, for those of us, like, all of us were just undeserving of that unconditional love. And not only does he intervene, but it says in Romans that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and that it prays for us, that, that God is groaning in prayer over us, over all of our circumstances for when we don't know the words to pray, when we don't even know what to do, no direction at all, that the Holy Spirit steps in and it intervenes and intercedes for us. Um, the, yeah, the, the Holy Spirit, it's intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. So in the song we're about to sing, it says in one part, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. And he never stops. God never stops pursuing us. He never stops loving us. He is always, always wanting us to come to him so that he can show us his will and we can glorify him. That's always the plan. I'm so thankful to know the Waymaker. Will you stand and sing with us? I worship you, 
dismiss our children ages 4 to 12 to kids church ages 3 and under are dismissed to the nursery and as they go out this morning let's just sing a song of praise to our way maker our miracle worker and I exalt thee I It is a joy to be with you today. Tell that uh, I'm not the internet preacher. I'm thankful for this younger generation that has jumped into that so well, but I'm a, just kind of an old-fashioned Bible reading, Bible preaching, hands-on preacher. So... Uh, you, they'll get this all worked out. We welcome all of you that are watching by way of Facebook or internet streaming in some fashion or other. And we trust that you will be blessed. But let me say this to all of you out there in the web or on the web, whatever your circumstance may be. The moment you can get in the doors of the church, get in the seats. God is going to do some things in here that you won't get out there. And so I trust that your heart will be stirred. You might say, well, what, why do you make such a big deal? Why are you so serious about preaching? Because the Bible tells us that the preaching of God's word is, is foolishness to the world, but to us it is the power of God unto salvation. And uh, I am thankful 
as the founding pastor of this church of two young guys that are coming along behind me that earnestly and seriously and faithfully preach the word. Say, well, what's the big deal? Because the Bible gives a pastor the responsibility of watching for your souls. And uh, so um, a lot of the world is adrift because nobody is watching for their souls. They've not put themselves in a position where anybody can watch their souls. And so I trust this morning that you will uh, come to the Word of God with a willing, eager heart to receive what God has for us today. I'll ask you to turn your, in your Bibles to Psalms 118. And uh, I want to share with you a scripture that is, is a, a game changer. Um, recently, I, I w- watched some of the NBA finals, and uh, a uh, young man was going up for a shot, maybe one of the best players in the league. And uh, a, uh, one of the players on the other team, who's seven feet tall, tremendously athletic, caused the, a, a player to give up the ball, took a couple of steps, and blocked the shot of the, of the outstanding player, going to be a star. They say he's going to be a Kobe Bryant. And... And it turned the game around. It was a game changer. And the Bucks went on to win that game and may, it appears, may wind up winning the series because of a game changer. All scripture, the Bible says, is profitable for correction. And Do you like to be corrected? <laughs> uh, instruction. Uh, exhortation, and uh, it's profitable. All scripture's profitable. But there are some scriptures that are just altering of our daily lives. This is one of those scriptures. If you can get this and appropriate it and practice it and integrate it into your life, it can change your days. Psalms 118, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to begin looking at verse 21. It says, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 24, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Verse 24 says, this is the day the Lord hath made. This. Uh, I want us to look at the opening words of this verse and try to glean what God is communicating to us. The first thing I want you to see, it says, this is the day. This one. Uh, This day. You say, well, this day's already messed up for me, or I don't care about this day. I've already lost interest in this day. This day is a significant day because the Bible says it's the day the Lord hath made and God doesn't make junk. This is the day the Lord made. Uh, I, I am interested in things that people make. Um, when I was a boy, one of the things that my mother invested in my life was good cooking. 
One of the favorite things that my mother made for me was fried chicken. And uh, so she made amazing fried chicken. So I married a, a young lady, and she found out I liked fried chicken, so she started working on it, has worked on it for about 40-something years, and is really good at it. Uh, and um, however, just to do a little confessing, it doesn't show up very often. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Anybody have a violin? <laughs> Shirley, you play the violin? Now, I notice if we have like special guests or maybe her mother comes to visit, out comes the fried chicken. I think, wow, have her over more. And so I was going to tell, I was going to tell this little illustration as I was thinking about things people make. And, and lo and behold, uh, on Friday, I was, I was talking to her, and, and, she, and I usually go pick the groceries up for Rhonda. And so I said, what do you need? I'm going to be on this side of town. And uh, she said, well, I don't know. And so I said, well, I, I bought some hamburger at Smith Heisler's, best hamburger in the world, and uh, fixed some of that up. So she said, okay. So I came home and, and walked in, and, and she said, you smell that? I said, yeah, I do. So said, what is it? <laughs> and she said, you don't know? I said, no, I just smell it. Something's cooking, frying. And she said, when I was with Lindsay and Kroger's, I got some chicken legs. It's fried chicken. And she made some, and it was, it was wonderful. I feel like I am... Uh, David in Saul's armor here with this thing on. Uh, is there something specifically I need to do besides turning this thing upside down? Um, and so, so I, that was a significant meal to me. You made it worse, Lindsay. No. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. I feel comfortable now. That meal was a significant meal because it was something Rhonda made, and she is good at it. I enjoyed it, and I ate four chicken legs. I overconsumed because it was so wonderful. The Bible says that this is the day the Lord hath made. This is the day the Lord hath made. So because he made it, it is significant. There are no insignificant days in our life. Every day is a day the Lord has made. And so we need to try to grasp the significance of the day. It is a, a sunny day because the Lord hath made it. Now, not a, not a S-U-N-N-Y a S O N N Y. Because if you know Christ, the Bible says that our life is hid with Christ in God. And so we have the Holy Spirit in us and we are in Christ. And so every day should be a significant day because we are in Christ. Paul said it like this, what? Know ye not that ye are not your own, you are bought with a price? Therefore glorify God with your body and your spirit, which are his. And so every day should be a sunny day. Every day, this day, should be a surrendered day. What does it say? This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
Now let me say, there's a whole lot of days, if you are going to rejoice and be glad in it, you're just going to have to surrender God's will. Madison lives just up on the hill, so now we have uh, uh, somebody that looks down on us. We always look down on the Thompsons, and uh, now somebody lives up, looks down on us. And so Madison and I get to have a lot of conversations, and, and Madison is a person who likes to map out her day map out her days, map out her months, and, and know exactly what she's going to do, and then if it doesn't happen, it can be pretty disappointing. Because she's got it all scoped out. And I have told her repeatedly, I said, Madison, do you know what God's Word says you ought to do when you map this stuff all out? You ought to then say, if the Lord wills. The Bible says you ought to say, if the Lord wills, I will do this or that. Uh, She has something that she wants us to go to in 75 days, and she could tell you how many days it is. I don't know. And she'll call me once in a while, 74 days. 80 days, 97 days. The truth is, we don't know what's going to be going on in any of our lives in 70 days, in 90 days, in 110 days, in 360 days. We don't know. And so we say, if the Lord wills, and we surrender our day, this day, we will rejoice and be glad in it, this day, a surrendered day. Then he says, this is the day. Let me say to you, when God says is, he means is. Several years ago, I, I heard something. Uh, President Bill Clinton got in trouble and and was in the midst of litigation, and so the, he was subpoenaed, and he was, uh, they were uh, interrogating him, and his answer to what they, he, they were trying to box him into a corner, and he said this, that I, I just have never forgotten. He said, it depends on what the meaning of is is. Now, you'd have to be an attorney to think like that, I guess. But when God says, this is, he means this is the day. And so it means that we should live in the great I am. God was talking to Moses. He told Moses to go see Pharaoh. He said, you know, who am I I supposed to say sent me? He said, say, I am sent me. You ought to be delighted that we have an I am God. Be easy to say, well, he was the God of Moses. Moses could say, he is my God. He's a God of Abraham, he's a God of Isaac, he's a God of Jacob. But how wonderful to say, well, he's a God of Forey. And he's a God of David Blamer. He's a God of Ted Whitney. He's a God of Mark Boucher. He needs that, right, Bo? I met Bo works with his dad quite a bit. And I imagine you could make some amazing YouTube videos right off of that little experience. We were at at a ball game, and uh, Bo brought a fan. 
And so we had this little powered fan to sit right at the ball game. I thought, wow, how cool is that? So I looked over, I said, oh, it's got MB on it. Mark Battery said, yeah, it has that on it. He said, it's mine, and my dad put his initials on it. <laughs> and, uh, but God is the God of Mark Boucher and Bo Boucher and the God of each of us today because he is the great I am. He says, this is the day. We need to live in the great I am for this day. You say, well, how am I going to do tomorrow? I really don't know. But I do know that God will give you grace for today. God will give you grace for today. And tomorrow, I do know when you get up, he'll give you grace for tomorrow. But he won't give you grace for tomorrow today. This is the day. Live in the great I am. Paul said what you, what you need to do is you need to leave the past and live in today. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind, I find it interesting how people like to glamorize or sensationalize the past. Uh, they get nostalgic about the past. Uh, Ron and I... Uh, we're dating in the 70s, and so we listened to the 70s love songs, which were, if you want to be objective about it, the best ever. Objectively. I mean, they, they were great. But I was thinking about the songs that were written in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and uh, a lot of them wanted to talk about yesterday. Yesterday, and then they just launch into all about how wonderful yesterday was. Do you remember? Those were the days, my friend. Now the, oh, if we could just go back to those days. Yester me, yester you, yesterday. Those were the great days, and now we're stuck with these days. Some look back with nostalgia at the days. Other look back at the days with bitterness. Oh, somebody did me wrong. Oh, back then, I've, I've never recovered from it. I'll never recover from it. I don't ever want to recover from it. I had somebody tell me one time, I'm bitter and I don't ever want to get over it. I want to hold on to this the rest of my life. Yeah, go ahead and make all your days rotten. But the Bible says, this is the day. Get in this day. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And then we, 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 don't, we don't live in the future. Now, we're thankful that we have, we have hope and promise in the future. But it is not our job to figure out all of our days for tomorrow. Because if you do, you're going to get overwhelmed and discouraged. Uh, you ought to be thankful that you don't know what's going to happen in 2022. I'm thankful I didn't know about the pandemic before it got here. We got through it. And we'll get through the, the little stages of it and whatever comes in the days ahead, we'll get through it. But I'm glad that we didn't have advance warning. God didn't say, look out for 2021, because you're going to get, 2020, you're going to get hammered. No, God says, I want you to understand that I'll be with you today, and I'll be with you tomorrow, I'll be with you the next day, and all the days that you have coming up, no matter what's in the day, I'll be there. I'll be with you. It says, this is the day. The day. 
It's interesting, and you say, why did God order things like that? I don't know. He wanted us to have that just a daily dependency and trust in him, and he set it up that way, just like manna came to the children of Israel for their daily portion. The Bible tells us some things that will happen in the day if we appropriate them. Uh, in the day should be rejoicing because this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, let me tell you something. I have been with people who were both dying and rejoicing. You say, well, how can you be dying and rejoicing? Well, there are things worse than death. And I've seen people who were rejoicing that they were just about to cross over. Uh, I stood at, at Virgil's side just uh, a few days ago. And uh, his daughter took me back to the little room where he was in a hospital bed. And... and uh, I said, well, she said, I'm not sure he can hear you. He hadn't responded uh, today. And I said, well, I'd still like to talk to him. And uh, so I got up close. She said, well, let me put his hearing aid in. So she put his hearing aid in. And I got right up next to him. I said, Virgil, Pastor Dan. I said, old soldier, you're about ready to make the crossing. She said, oh, for the last two weeks or uh, the last short period of time, he's just been wanting to go. He's ready to go. Uh, I have been with people in all types of circumstances, at funerals, at um, breakups, and oftentimes I have said in my heart or said out loud, I'm so thankful to have the Lord when you go through things. Um, maybe in the midst of a financial downturn, but I have the Lord with me. Um, maybe in the midst of a confusing circumstance, but you can... Turn to the Lord and call on the Lord. And even when you can't talk to anybody else, you can talk to him and he knows and he hears and he understands. For the day, there should be rejoicing. The second thing the Bible teaches us that in the day, this is the day, in the day there should be receiving. What, is the, what, is the, what does the Bible tell us to pray? Give us this day our daily bread. She so said, well, I'm not sure I've gotten my daily bread. Oh, you got it. He gives us our daily bread. The question is, will you receive it? Will you accept it? You say, well, this wasn't the bread I was looking for. Well, you may get a whole lot of whole wheat or rye or uh, hard French buns that you weren't looking for. But the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. In the day, he also said he would do renewing. Renewing. Paul said, though the outward man is perishing. Anybody identify with that? Outward man is perishing. Though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is renewed day by day by day. Oh, how amazing is that? So it means when the blinkers won't work, and the grinders fall out, and the, the legs are shaking, and the arms are not working like they once did, even when all of that is happening, the inner man 
can be running like a Mustang with a 390 in it. Four speed on the floor. The inner man. The last thing the Bible that I want to share that the Bible teaches about the day is that God is in the rewarding business for the day. Last week I was, I was blessed by Lindsay's testimony and thought, well, that's, that's exciting about their business, that their business is growing, they're able to give like that. And the truth is, Rhonda and I always gave, but we were never in a position to give like that. Our giving was always, it may have been in the same proportion to the amount of money we made, but it was not big giving. Uh, when, and early in our ministry in this church, I told Rhonda, I said, I want us to, to give in such a way that the biggest, our biggest monthly gift is our tithe and offering to the Lord, bigger than our uh, house payment, bigger than anything else. I want, it, I want that to be a, our biggest payment. And God uh, allowed us to be able to do that. But in proportion, uh, I'm sure it, was, it may have been small. And you may be here and you say, um, I can't give like that on a fixed income. Or I can't give like that. I'm just like day to day. I'm careful with my money and I try not to be extravagant, but I couldn't give like that. You know what God says to you? You know what Christ says to you? A cup of cold water given in my name will have its reward. And any of you, could you handle a Dixie cup? I'll buy, I'll buy you 50 Dixie Cups. And then just give somebody a cup of cold water. Say, I hope this refreshes you. Because God's been so good to me, I give you this in the name of the Lord. The Bible says that, that will have its reward. And so our days should be rejoicing days. Because God made them. Our days should be receiving days because He's going to give us our daily bread. You accept it. Our days should be renewing days because He said He'll just, He can rev up the inner man even when the outer man is falling apart. And then our days can be rewarding days because God says if you give. I'll open the windows of heaven and I'll bless you and help you and meet your needs. And all of us in here have seen the evidence of that in our lives. I'd like for us to stand together this morning and I'd like for you to answer this question. What are you doing with your days? You say, I've got my, my life scoped out. I've got my direction scoped out. But what are you going to do in your life day by day by day? If you learn to surrender your days to him, there will be rejoicing, rewarding, renewing, day by day by day. This morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I wonder if, if there are those here who would say, Pastor, I am, I'm a Christian, but uh, I've, soured on my days or I have 
squandered my days. Or I go through my days looking for the week to end so that I can have the weekend. I go through the year saying I can't wait for June or July so I can go on vacation and get past all these regular work days. And God says, but son, every day when you wake up, that's a day I made. This is a day that I made, the Lord made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what God may have spoken to you about today, but if you're here and you'd say, Pastor Dan, Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart in this service about an area in my life and like for you to pray for me and pray with me. If you're here like that, would you just slip your hand up? Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Yes, yes. Yeah, I see those hands. See those hands. Yes, God bless you. I have a second question. There may be those here that say, you know, I don't know Christ as my Savior. I died tonight. I don't know that I'd go to heaven. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to my heart today about my need for salvation. Would you pray for me? There may be someone here. Chances are there is someone under the sound of my voice. Whether it be in the building here, chances are there's someone in the building that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. And then with those who are watching and those who are listening out on the web, there may be those who don't know Christ as Savior. If you're here like that today, and you'd say, you know, Pastor, God is speaking to my heart. And I'd like to publicly acknowledge, with no one looking around, but here in this public building, with you looking at hands, I'd like to acknowledge, I don't know Christ. If I died tonight, I don't know that I would go to heaven. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to my heart. If you're here like that, would you just slip your hand up? Slip your hand up so that I can see it. And I'd like to pray for you. And uh, God knows all of our hearts, sees all of our hearts. Father, we are thankful for the privilege of being in this place, in this pulpit. Thankful for a, a faithful pastor who has asked us to be here because he wanted us to minister to the flock. He wanted us on this day to participate in the process of watching for these souls. And so now, Lord, I pray that you will take this truth and stitch it to the fabric of our hearts and our lives so that forevermore, until this corruption shall put on incorruption, until we lay aside this earthly tabernacle, that we would understand that you have made our day and we must rejoice and be glad in it. Use this scripture, I pray, to accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to sing a, a little closing song. And... Um, if God's speaking to your heart, you need to come forward. Let me, let me tell you, the biggest thing that will change your days is the day you decide to follow Jesus. I remember as a boy being in revivals. My dad was preaching, coming down to the altar and praying about wanting to follow Jesus. I remember being a, about a 10-year-old boy and and dad had gotten a 1963 Oldsmobile F85 station wagon, white on the outside, red interior. And I can remember kneeling in the back of that car and asking God to help me and God to forgive me. Because I think what I had probably been doing is sneaking with some boys and trying a cigarette or two. Confession. 
And but I remember kneeling and praying and asking God to help me because I was in the process of growing in the Lord and understanding the significance and the importance of following Jesus. And it's been the greatest thing I ever did. I have never known anyone who followed Jesus with all their heart and all their mind and all their soul, who at the end of the day said, oh, I wish I had not followed him. I wish I had not spent my days chasing after God and serving God. The only thing I've ever heard is, I'm so thankful I served the Lord. Maybe I wish I'd been a little more faithful. I wish I'd done it a little harder. But anybody I've ever been with at the end of their life who served the Lord rejoiced that they had served the Lord. Let's sing this little chorus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. If God's speaking to your heart, you need to come. You mind the Lord. I have decided. Let me say in closing, I'm thankful to Pastor John for letting me preach in this pulpit. Uh, I always jealously guarded who would stand here because I didn't want anybody to come up here that would cause you to drift or cause you to go astray or raise question marks. And uh, Pastor John sent me a text this morning and and uh, told me a little statement that Adrian Rogers gave about starting slow and, and then hitting your stride and then ending on fire. So I sent him a little note back. I said, sorry, too late. I said, I'm already on fire. <laughs> and I said, I'm hitting the platform racing. But uh, praise the Lord for a faithful young preacher. I, people talk to me all the time about how their lives are blessed by faithful young preacher who just carefully and consistently proclaims the word of God. And that's the hope of the church and that's the hope of America. Lord bless you. Shake hands with one another. You're dismissed.